So in the second chapter, we're going to take what we made in the first, this basic shape in Maya that we've created, and we're going to make a high poly bake mesh from it, and we're going to make our low poly game model out of it as well. So let's look at our concept art and let's get an idea of why I created these shapes and why I didn't go in and model this crack in or make model these divots in or whatnot. Well, in this workflow, I'll be really blunt and uh, quick to the point here. And the workflow we're going to be doing, we're going to be using Endo and Photoshop just to draw these shapes in um, on a 2D setting. And then we will convert those shapes in the 2D setting to create normal maps using Endo. Um, it's a lot faster than going in and modeling in all these superficial uh, recesses and troughs and extrusions when we can simply paint them in we can model something a lot faster so with that being said let's go ahead and set up our scene now so we can start modeling our high poly and modeling our low poly so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my original piece here and I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm just gonna select one of these pieces and I'm gonna create new layer from selected and this is going to be my low poly this is going to be my low poly mesh so I'll make a low poly layer I'm going to select it again duplicate it one more time and I'm going to create another layer from selected and I'm going to call this high poly this is going to be the layer or model that we're going to put our, our support edge loops on and I'm going to take my original model and I'm going to give it its own layer call it original just in case I need to have access to it again so let's go ahead and bring up our high poly layer and let's start putting in some support edge loops on this guy so he gets really nice and uh, spiffy looking for our normal bake we'll be doing shortly alright so all we gotta do is add support edge loops so I'm going to insert my edge loop here and I'm just going to insert an edge loop close to every hard edge I already have in the low poly model. So I put one right here. I'll put one right there. And if we get press three on our keyboard and go into sub D mode, we can already see we have starting to have a hard edge there. But I need to add one more right here. Let me just go to insert edge loop tool again. So with three support edge loops on this corner. I now get a nice beveled edge there. All right, let's keep going. So I'm going to put some support edge loops down my extruded out utility maintenance panel, what have you, whatever you want to call it, just so I can start getting my shape down a little bit better. And switching back and forth between one and three mode, definitely something I recommend doing. And now instead of all this, uh, it's not so much a, a hard 90 degree angle anymore. When we go into sub D mode by pressing 3, it gives us a nice beveled edge. So 1 and 3 are the modes we're shifting in between. 1 is low poly mode, 3 is sub D mode. And we're just going to put some more support edge loops so we can really define the shape of this guy alright so I got the front of my utility panel defined I just need to add one more little edge loop down at the bottom here and that'll define the bottom part here alright looking good so far for the utility panel now I need to go in and fix this window right here Notice how I'm creating edge loops and not just uh, using one edge right here. It's important that you use edge loops and it's very important that you have only four sided edges. That's what's going to allow you to have such fine control over making these nice sharp edges that we see here. So you can kind of see me. I'm in sub D mode. See, what you, look what happens when we add a uh, support edge loop right at this corner here. It really 
ties down that shape really well. So what was once kind of flat and meh is now nice and beveled. And I'm going to make this even more sharp by adding a support edge loop on the inside right here. Well, look what happens when we do that now. That really sets off the edges of my wall here. All right. So with that going, let's see. I might want to add. Actually, I want to bring down this support edge loop right here. I want it to be sharper. So here's a nice little example. So I'm in sub D mode right now, and I have this support edge loop selected. As I pull it up, I get more of a organic feel to it because it's farther away from my corner here. As I pull it down though, I'm going to get a more defined shape as seen here. Very good. All right. I'll do the same thing for this side. I really want to get these edges of the window really locked in. So I want to make these bevels kind of tight. All right, cool. All right, so let's define our recesses down here. So I'm going to add support edge loops on the inside, like so. And I'm going to add them around the edges, like so as well. See how it's still circular? That just means you have to go in on the inside and add that support. And boom. We get those nice recesses. Alright. Let's do the same for the bottom. Put one on the inside and outside. And I'm going to go up here and just make sure I have, yeah, that will cut it up even more. Great. So support edge loops are just something you're going to have to get a feel of. There, are, there is a process to it, but by and large, the best support edge loops come with a lot of experience. So you're just going to have to get down and dirty with this yourselves. All right, great. So, now that my support edge loops have come in, it seems that they've run down all the way to my damage right here. So maybe all I have to do for my damage is add one support edge loop down this side. And then we have some nice hard edges there. Alright. I'm going to add one more edge loop to the bottom of this right there. Maybe one on the top. Give this a nice hard crease. See how much that creased. And I even maybe want to take one of these edge loops like so. One that goes all the way across. Here I have this edge that's still selected. So I select it and deselect it. It's a little trick. Sometimes you'll get these edges that won't go away. So I'm not going to take that one. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to push it in a little bit and scale it a little bit like so that'll give our top buttress a nice little crease there but we gotta pay attention to our side over here so I'm gonna fix it a little bit because that's looking a little wonky isn't it I think I just need to maybe undo that. All right. Oh, maybe I'll just at least push it in. All right, great. That'll help me to find that crease just a little bit more. But I do have to go back in. Let's look at it from the side now. By pushing that in, my verts are now not lined up on the zero axis. 
so I just snap them to grid. I'm just going to go in and do that for all of my verts on the border edge right here. Okay. So I'm going to give it a once over and see if I'm done with it. And I think this will be a nice piece to bake onto. Yeah, I don't see any uh, weird creases, weird defects. Everything's got a nice beveled, smooth edge to it. There's my girlfriend. Here, get her out of there. Um, nice hard edges. <clears throat> and I'm happy with my hot poly. So I'm going to go into my outliner now and let's name it. Let's call this high poly underscore not underscore smooth. Because we haven't given it a smooth yet. Let's call it mesh 001. All right. So what we're going to do with our high poly not smooth, we're going to actually duplicate it. And we're going to call this one smoothed. And what we're going to do is let's see let me make a new layer for this smooth one let's call this smoothed because this is what we're actually going to bake from okay so what we're gonna do now since we have our support edge loop set up and the reason why I made it not smooth and smooth is whenever I smooth this out it's gonna be pretty much um, smooth. I won't be able to go back from it. So I'm going to just make sure I have a lifeline left. So I'm going to make my high poly um, with my support edge loops. I'm going to duplicate it and have a original not smooth. So I can always go back and edit it. Alright. So let's just go to mesh. Let's smooth it once. And we'll smooth it again. And this is our high poly mesh that we're going to make for our model. You know what? Let's look at this. With it being just one half and not smooth or not combined, look what these edge loops are doing. The verts, the original verts, are all placed right here, but when you smooth it, they kind of do this curve up and over. So, you know what? I'm going to undo this and I'm going to go ahead and do a duplicate special and I'm going to mirror this across and then smooth it. So I'm going to freeze my transformations, reset transformations to get my handle right in the center of the grid. I'm going to go to my side view and make sure all my verts are lined up down the axis and they are. And I'm going to go to my edit, duplicate special and we're not going to scale in the X degree, we're going to scale in the Z degrees and the Z direction rather. So like so. Now I have my model all duplicated out, mirror imaged. We're going to go to mesh and we're going to combine both objects. And then we're going to go to vertex mode and I'm going to select all my vertices to merge it because if my merge tolerance is set low enough, say 0.001, the only verts that are going to be affected are going to be the ones that are laying right on top of each other, right on the zero axis. So if I hit apply, nothing looks like it's happened, but when I do a smooth, I now see that my, uh, and we will see this whenever I do my smooth again. Let's just go ahead and do that smooth again. Alright, and let's delete my history. I'll go to edit, delete all by type, history. Let me delete these two groups I don't use anymore. There's nothing in those. And we'll call this high poly smoothed mesh 01. Keeping your names is important because when you start baking, it's easy to be confused about what you're baking and what you're not baking. So let's go to mesh and we'll smooth it and smooth it again. Notice now, since I have both sides of the object welded together, I don't get those curvy edges anymore. Everything is nice, crisp, and clean, and it's ready to rock and roll. And even, um, quick tip, whenever we're doing our bake process, you never want to bake on half the model anyway if we were doing the uh, method we were, where we're just modeling one half. 
you want your ba remember this you want your bake model to be both sided so two sided you don't want to have any hollowness or a missing side on your model this will just ensure that you have nice even uh, normal maps in the baking process all right we'll see what that we'll understand that a little bit more later on in the lesson all right great so I'm just gonna take this new smooth I'm gonna apply it to my smooth layer add selected objects and I'm gonna get it out of here okay so now I'm gonna open up my low poly layer and we're gonna optimize this guy to be a nice video game asset so the first thing we're gonna do is let me get my outliner out of here we're not gonna have this indention we're not gonna waste our polygons we're gonna just delete our recesses in here we're gonna let the normal map take care of this kind of detail all right so let's just delete these faces shall we and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna append the polygons here this will save us you know six six faces four to six faces I'm not gonna do, take the time to do the math and then we're just gonna repair these verts right here I'm gonna select these verts that are inset now and hold V on my keyboard that way I can snap them flush with the rest of these verts here and what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna select you know what I can get just get rid of these edges so I'm gonna select these edges delete edge vertex now I can easily append a polygon here alright great so now my job is I have the silhouette I want now my job is to optimize this model so I want to get as few triangles or faces as I can and still retain the silhouette and still retain the shape a good way to help you see how many faces or triangles you have let's, let's go to display let's go to heads up display and then let's go to poly count and we get this nice little display up here we have verts edges faces and tries are what really we're gonna be focusing on right now we're gonna really snap verts together and merge them that's going to be the crux of our workflow right here so let's just start somewhere basically all I do when I optimize my models I just make heavy use of snap the vertex mode and I just snap unnecessary vertices together like so I don't need this edge or vertex anymore All right. Let's see I don't even need these right here there's really no you know I might need those right there see what happened when I snapped it here I lost the continuity of my wall here so I'm gonna keep that one alright let's keep going I can actually even come in here and snap these to the far corners Cool. I wonder if I can even snap these over here. Nope, that's going to mess with my geometry. But I can definitely snap this over to here. Alright. Leave this right here, kind of even out this little triangle. Alright. I don't, <laughs> it looks like I don't even need this edge loop right here anymore. So I select, double select the edge loop, we go to edit mesh, I want to just delete edge and vertex. These vertices aren't affecting the silhouette at all, so I'll just go ahead and snap these down. All right, these edge loops aren't doing anything, so I'll just delete these. Do the same for this. All right, Maya is saying that. Wait we can't do that these are necessary for your border edge well in that case we'll just snap them like we've been doing so I'm holding V on the keyboard and I'm just going crazy with my snapping well it's a purposeful snap it's not like insane I don't know what I'm doing kinda crazy alright so it even looks so right now we have a lot of snap vertices let's just go ahead and merge what we got so I'm just gonna select every vertice on my low poly model and I'm gonna go to edit mesh and merge this will ensure that I only merge the verts that are laying on top of one another that I've snapped and it's a good it's a good point I'm actually gonna take this time to save 
haven't saved in a while. So go to elections. So this is chapter two, part one. First save. This will be a good point. That way, if I make a mistake here in a second, I can always go back and start over. These really aren't doing anything for my silhouette, so I'm going to snap these over. It's just really just a, I don't know, a snapping game. Looks like I have some hidden faces here. Let's see what I can do with it. I'm going to inverse select and then get rid of that face. Everything's peaches right there. That's great. I can even take this vert up here. I'm just going to snap it there. This may look a little weird, this triangle here, but all that matters is what it looks like when it's not selected. Your geometry can look really weird on your game models because we're using a lot of triangles here, right? But we don't need to worry about it because uh, we're no, we don't have to put any support edge loops in. The shading looks fine. So, you know, why not? actually bring these up you want to be smart with the way the place you put your triangles you don't want them to be too insane you don't want to get really pinched close together triangles at all I mean that's pushing it right there you know see how narrow this triangle is that's pushing it a little bit but we can even just come up in here and we can just attach it to that let's do the same thing for these we'll just go up with it it's looking really messy and weird right now, but you know, optimization can get a little weird sometimes. A lot of triangles, huh? That's okay. I'm even gonna come over here and just get rid of these. Now I only have one face. So let's select all my verts again and we'll merge. Quick little shortcut to merge. Hold shift and right click, move up to merge verts, and go to merge verts right there. Alright, so we're getting close. Let's just go to my normals and set a normal edge at 30 degrees. Alright, as you can see, my silhouette has not changed at all. But look at my geometry now. We've really started cleaning up our faces. I can even probably move this one up right here. And there's a judgment call you gotta make. Do you just wanna keep going all the way up with it? My triangles don't look distressed at all. So I guess we still can. There we go. We'll merge those. Yeah, don't even try to go into sub D mode doing this. It won't look pretty. So let's just keep looking. And it doesn't look like this edge is really messing with the silhouette too much or the out or the you know the outside line of it when you look at it against the background silhouette style. So let's just tuck these verts somewhere. Maybe up here. Okay. And these aren't doing anything for us. So I'm just going to pull those up there. I don't know how much more optimized we can get. I mean, if I pull this over here, it messes with that. Maybe I can pull that over there. See, it was right there. What if I snap this all the way over here? I think that works too. That works. All right, let's select all our verts again. Let shift, right click, merge vertices, merge vertices. All right, let's just double check here. Let's go to edit mesh or mesh. <coughs> we'll go to clean up right here we'll do a few things we're checking to see if we have any end gons so I'm going to go to select matching polygons and I'm going to select faces with more than four sides it doesn't select anything so it looks like I'm good and I'm going to go and clean up my normals because I have a weird shading error right there so I need to go in and fix my normals I'm going to set my normal angle to 30 or hard hardened edge will do it because this is a pretty hard geometric model and I'm just gonna give it another once over to see if there's any more faces that aren't really doing anything for our basic model here it looks like I'm good 
Everything is logically placed. I have no end guns. And there was probably a, a you know a handful or a dozen ways I could have optimized this, but I just went with the flow. And I don't see any shading errors and my silhouette hasn't changed. I think we've got our game model here. We now have 53 tries. So when we duplicate this across, we're going to get away with a prop with 106 triangles or 62 faces. That's not too bad. I'm happy with that. I can't get too much few I can't get any fewer than that without really sacrificing the uh, visual integrity of our model here. So now I'm just going to go and make sure that I'm lined up on my zero axis. All right, so I'm going to select all these verts right here. I'm going to hold down X and just snap it and zero it out right on the zero point of this grid right here. I have it hidden in here, but you can see it in my side view. All right, so with that finished, I'm just going to freeze transformations, reset transformations, and let's go ahead and give it a name. Let's go to my outliner and we'll call this low poly no UV mesh 001 because we haven't UV'd it yet. That brings us to our next uh, chapter. In the next chapter we're going to go over the UV process for our game model here and explain some of the ways that we need to uh, set up our UV maps so that our normal maps bake nice and cleanly. Uh, there's a lot of uh, rules of thumb we're going to be following in the next chapter when we do our UV mapping. I'll see you then.